In terms of me getting involved when I, when I did in 2015, obviously what, what predates that is you're born, as somebody famously said, you're born a ranger. Um, and I was born a ranger, you know, I can remember various milestones along that, you know, 1978 for example, I remember I was 14 years of age. My dad took me to that final game of the season and the celebrations are still with me. I remember the very song that, that, that they were singing at the end and I think I even remember the brand of fizzy sparkling wine that was, that was going around uh, quite liberally on the East Terracing as it then was. So you're born a ranger but then um, you know you're a supporter, a lifelong supporter and then in 2015 in a nutshell why get involved? And that is, dare I say it, love. I love them. And, and like every Rangers family, every Rangers supporter, it is part of your family. You don't really have a choice in that. It's your family. And this member of my family, much loved member of my family, was hurt and hurting and being hurt. And I was in a position, fortunately, that if I were able to help, you answer that call. And I was asked, would you help? And that was March 2015. Well, I was asked months before that, several months before that, would you help? Without question. And I, I turn it to anybody else. If a member of your family, a really loved member of your family, is suffering to that extent at the hands of people, you've got to change the people and you've got to stop the heart and restore that club to where it is today. We're going to write our club. And that's all that matters to me in this whole thing, is write this club on the pitch and off the pitch, and I'm sure we'll come on and talk about it, that's not done yet, in, in every respect. You know, it's not done in all respects, sorry. Um, we are back where we belong, at the top of Scottish football. There's an awful lot more work to be done to make sure we stay there, and that's on and off the park. And, and that was the conversation, that conversations that we had, and then in March 2015, uh, I joined the board and it's to help, it's to do what you can. If you're in that position where you are able to help, whether that's financial or expertise, um, and you're asked to, to do so without hesitation. You know, everybody on that board recognises that they kept it ticking. They kept it going, the, the lifeblood is, is coursing through the veins of the club, courtesy of those supporters, and you're absolutely right. And in terms of those, those home attendances, but also those towns that those fans would travel to. People talk in Scotland about the Blue Pound, it's our travelling support, and some clubs might, you know, may have, uh, some clubs have very much enjoyed that. And, and, and you know, you, we've, we've managed to make a few friends uh, in lower league clubs along the way. And that's, that is testament to our fans you know, what they brought, the richness, the atmosphere, the support. And I'm going to say the defiance, because they know what was done to their club. I know what was done to my club. Done to my club. And our fans showed their defiance and their loyalty. Um, the words I talked earlier about, um, pioneer comes through in our heritage. So does loyal. So does loyalty. Football is quite an interesting business, um, challenging business, intense business, very public business. And here are we trying to turn around this institution under an intense public gaze, it's hard enough t turning around a business out of the public gaze, but you're trying to turn around Glasgow Rangers, loved by so many uh, around the world, including ourselves. One of the things that was really important to me, uh, uh, knowing I was going into not just any football, but, but going into a football business, if you like, if you depersonalise it, what was important to me was the people I was going to be shoulder to shoulder with. Shoulder to shoulder with. If I look at that boardroom today, Every single person in that boardroom loves Rangers as much as I do, cares about Rangers as much as I do. So if you can find better custodians for Glasgow Rangers, um, I would challenge you uh, in terms of their intentions, our intentions, how much we love and how much we will protect that club. And I think it has been demonstrated, if I, if I may say that myself, uh, on behalf of my colleagues, that's been demonstrated financially and in everything that we are trying to do and we're not going to stop. This is a club run by, owned by, in, in terms of a great majority, and invested in by lifelong Glasgow Rangers fans. I, I actually, and this is my personal take on this, what it means to me, I think this is a legacy moment for Rangers Football Club. I really do. Was there a title more important than 55? Please debate, because <laughs> I don't think so.
Um, it's certainly one of the most important ever. So this to me and my family, because it goes, boy, they've gone through it with me, is a legacy moment in the history of Glasgow Rangers. That's, just, that's how big this is. That's 55 and 150. And I, we said this at the AGM, there are two numbers that matter most to us. I know some other numbers might have mattered to other clubs. Um, we achieved our number, 55. Here are we sat atop 55. Here are we sat on the cusp of 150. But we're also sat, this is how I visualise it in my own head, we're sat on this bridge, bridging from recovery to growth. And that's what this offering to our fans is, is really about. Come and join us now for the growth phase of what we are uh, achieving and about to achieve. It's hugely important. I see that transition not complete. And we're asking the fans to help us complete the transition, invest for growth, invest in the heritage, including the museum and lots more. So it is a growth phase that we're asking the fans to, to come and, and help us with and be part of. You know, a really important point in all of this is I see this as a response to demand as well, incidentally, because around the turn of last year, so you're getting sort of around the, the time of the AGM, there was a very noticeable upswing in incoming requests from supporters near and far, including to myself directly. How can we invest directly in Rangers? And, and, I, and, and I think a large part of the motivation for that question I wanting to own part of Rangers is exactly my motivation and my colleague's motivation. Own part of this heritage, own it at this legacy moment, and strengthen and future proof this club. It's no different from the board owners of the share, shareholders of the, of, of the club. It's absolutely no different. There's an element of never again. You know, I think you, you asked me earlier what did it feel like and watching what was going on. Never again. Never again can we let this happen. And that's part of the future proofing uh, that, that, that this is about. Deepening and broadening the fan share ownership is part of that. And again, this, this, I talked about the legacy moment. I am deeply proud to be part of Rangers at this point. This 55, this 150. I, we've delivered 55. Why, why is 150 important? Well, for all the very obvious reasons. But it's also really important that we future-proof the next 150 years for this club. And that chimed with never again. Um, and my, my own personal legacy, and I, 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 I'm pretty convinced a lot of fans who are asking us, how do we buy directly from the club? I think this is, is part of their motivation as well. Part of my motivation is not only to be part of this legacy, this legacy moment, to, but to be able to pass my shares with their votes. One share, one vote, and I'm a passionate believer in shareholder democracy. It's what I do for a living. Pass those, passing those shares on to my loved ones is legacy, is really important to me. And I think a big motivation for the many fans who are asking, been asking us for the last six months, how do I buy directly? I think the clearest, and I don't want to say the most predictable, but um, certainly the clearest and most consistent pillar number one, the fans. Look at what they've done thus far. <laughs> buying season tickets, buying match day tickets when they can, when this pandemic is over. So that is just keep going. And, and you, know, you don't even have to issue a rallying call to Rangers fans around the world to keep going. It's what they've done through thick and thin and even thinner in, uh, in, in recent years. And then there's, there's number two. European football, there is a, there is a delta there. There is, a, there is a, 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 an unpredictable there. Um, of course, is it Champions League? Is it Europa? But look at what Rangers has contributed to very substantially, the Scottish coefficient, despite what happened to the club back then. Look what we've done to pull that coefficient up, and that coefficient has very meaningful implications for our club's position in European football, and therefore the revenue generating capabilities of this club. We are more likely than ever to be in some form of European, lucrative European uh, uh, competition. 
So that's pillar number two. Commercial, again, it's the, fan, the fans, they, they will continue to, I think, blow people away by their appetite for our merchandise, for our, our, our kit, um, but also our commercial partners. You look at, I talked earlier about trebling the number. The job that James has and his team have done in partnering with top corporates. Commercial is hugely important and it's not just more of the same, it's keep growing. Keep growing. And then the fourth one, I think we're on the cusp of proving that model. I think that fourth piston is just about to fire up because um, we've certainly got the playing squad um, and I think we've got the right people to manage that playing squad in terms of the player trading model and what we're doing. If you look at the, some of the, the, the signings that we've been doing, I think it's quite clear the direction of travel that, uh, that we're in, in terms of uh, player training. Well, when I, when I think about you know, what, what somebody gets from buying shares uh, in, in Rangers, um, I think from my, my own perspective, what do I get? What is my motivation? for investing and it is owning what we've talked about. It is owning the DNA of the club. It is owning the heritage of the club. It is owning the pioneering spirit of the club. And 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 we talked a bit about the pioneering in terms of the women's football. The pioneering museum. Owning actually owning, not just owning the assets, owning the heritage. And crucially having one share, one vote, the right to vote at, at general meetings, annual general meetings, a voice. And the right, as I have, and the intention that I have, coming back to that word legacy, to leave that in my family, to leave that ownership, the ownership of all of that. Rangers is part of my DNA, it's part of my family, and, and for me, I've cemented that by owning equity, owning part of that business. I am a part owner, not just of the business, of the football club, and actually the football club, first and foremost, the DNA, the heritage. That's what's crucial. This is direct ownership. You are enfranchised when you own an ordinary share. You're enfranchised to the point of um, one share, one vote. Again, going back to that point of the bridge from the recovery phase to the self-sustaining phase, part of the self-sustaining phase, of course, has to include revenue generation, clearly, by definition. Now, if I look at whether it's the museum or some of the plans we have, and James Bisgrove might be able to, to, to add further flesh to this. Um, and James Bisgrove never stops coming with, uh, with uh, ideas and happily they are revenue generating uh, ideas. But there are one or two in particular that I'm thinking of that will be uh, direct uses of this fundraise. And I think that's consistent with the bridge to self-sustainability. If you're asking people to come along now, we're about to close. I haven't quite closed, but we're about to close the recovery phase. Come with us now. You're owning the DNA, you're owning everything I talked about, but you're also helping us complete the bridge to the growth phase. That growth phase must include not just player trading, which requires strengthening of the squad Initially, that's investment, but also investment in revenue generating parts of the football club. For example, lounges, hospitality suites, seating, premium seating. And I think the fans can look forward to that. Well, investing in Rangers, and I, I do it because I, I, I love them, but also because I wanted to help restore this club, my club, the club I love. And maybe not everybody's in, in that position. And actually, We've moved beyond the really intense restoration recovery period. And this is a case, so if somebody's considering it, you're considering it at a time when you're on the cusp of, of a momentum, actually. I think a momentum. You know, and it's a case of help us now drive this forward. This is about going forward. We've dealt with this recent chapter in our history. We're moving from recovery to growth on and off the field. You know, we're not happy. We're delighted with 55, of course we are. 
for all sorts of reasons. But we don't stop. I said this at the AGM, it's Rangers, you don't stop. And it's a case of, let's go, as someone said. Let's go. And if you're going to invest in Rangers, it's about forward momentum now. Against some of the odds that some people perhaps placed on us and perhaps hoped for us. Let's go. Let's go forward. And people joining now, I think, are joining something that has been very significantly de-risked and is going to go on and do what Rangers has done for 150 years, and that's win. And you can own that. And I can tell you, it's a fantastic feeling being a part owner of all of that.